Hey, so welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna go through what is Lightning JS. And this is for folks who are exploring the framework or have heard about the framework, but don't understand anything about it. Um, so let's go through what exactly it is Lightning JS is and why you would use it. Uh, and primarily you are gonna be a TV app developer. You wanna build something on the screen. Uh, and TV apps, you can go native or you can go web. And a lot of different uh, TV platforms offer a web solution. Uh, and they have two browsers, uh, two possible browsers. One is the WPE browser, which is WebKit, which is essentially uh, Safari that's built in. Or a lot of modern TVs now have uh, Chromium built in. And what happens is every year they release a new version of Chromium in there. Um, but older TVs will have an old version of Chromium. Newer TVs, usually the latest version or close to the latest version. But what this gives you is a web development environment. So you get a browser that you can build screens on, uh, which is what I would say is probably the easiest way to build an app is using web development tools um, because they're, they're just amazing. But the issue that happens is on these TV devices, they are really low powered. Uh, so they are systems on a chip. They are very small chips. And you know when you get TVs, you want them to be as affordable as possible so more people buy them, which usually means they, they lower the cost of the chips and the hardware so you have less memory, uh, less processing power. And it makes it really hard to do these advanced screens uh, that are very interactive, that render very quickly uh, and great, give a great user experience. And so in the past, we've tried building different screens uh, and we've done this stuff in HTML and CSS. And what happens is there's just not enough performance. You can't get enough frames per second doing this. And the reason for that is because the browser has a very complicated process to convert HTML and CSS into a DOM tree, into a CSS object model. Uh, if you wanna learn more about that, Google has a bunch of articles about that, talking about how the browser converts HTML and CSS into um, a screen that you can see on. And it's, it's pretty complicated. There's a lot going on there to make that happen. And that obviously affects performance. The more you have to do, you know, the, the longer it takes, the, the less time that you have to render. And this is where Lightning JS comes in with their slogan, more performance, less code. The fundamental difference between this is it doesn't use HTML and CSS. Instead, it uses WebGL. And WebGL is built into the canvas tag inside of the browser. So you're still using a web browser, you're just using the canvas tag rather than all the other HTML and CSS markup that you would have. You use a canvas tag which is doing WebGL draw calls. And so when you write lightning code, it's JavaScript, uh, it has different syntax for it, but those instructions are going right to WebGL to draw something. There's less interpretation that has to happen, so you get a lot more frames per second. And so the lightning team has produced some average frames per second, uh, comparing an HTML app to a lightning app, and you're gonna get an additional you know, seven, eight frames per second, which might not seem like much, but when you go under 30 frames per second, you introduce jank and users do not like it when their screen is not responsive. And that's kind of the benefit of what Lightning is offering you is a lot more frames per second on low end hardware. And Lightning just came out with the Lightning 3 version. So this is about a year old now uh, since their initial release from beta and everything. And it, it has a few significant improvements from the previous version. Uh, so the fundamental difference between Lightning 2 and Lightning 3 is Lightning 3 has a standalone renderer. So it's a, an NPM package that is responsible just for rendering. And you can actually download the renderer and it has some example pages which has all this fun stuff happening. But the renderer takes uh, objects that take these properties and it just draws stuff on the screen. And you have a very low level primitive API to draw nodes and to also create text on the screen. So those are the two things that you can do with it. Uh, and then you can also animate those nodes to, to make changes. Um, and then the issue becomes, well, if you wanna build something very complicated, a complicated UI screen like this, you wouldn't wanna use those underlying uh, fundamental uh, APIs. You wanna use a framework. And the Lightning team offers their uh, framework called Blitz, which is their own syntax. You're welcome to go read about that on their website. 
Um, my specialty, and you're on this channel, is the SolidJS framework, which is the same integration with Lightning 3. So it uses the same render as the Blitz framework. Uh, it just uses the SolidJS syntax. And Solid is one of the fastest frameworks out there. It also uses JSX syntax, which is the most popular templating syntax for front-end developers. Uh, so it's a, a really great combination. And so if we look at that code, you know, we can write very simple markup code that's very similar to HTML and CSS, um, but render in WebGL. So it's a lot faster rendering. Uh, and so this is that actual code for that TMDB uh, page that we just showed. And all of the top stuff is the Solid API. So if you have web developers who are already familiar with Solid, they can jump right into this uh, and, and build an application very quickly. And then all of the markup down here is using the JSX control flow that SolidJS offers to build something with Lightning. So hopefully that answered your questions. If you like this video, please like it. If you have more questions, add a comment and I'd be happy to respond with another video. Thanks for watching.